right, so um, I wanted to do, I wanted to create some post lab notes um, for the mousetrap car. So, mousetrap car post lab notes. All right, so let's just start with the written description of the motion, right? Um, car speeds up while moving in the positive direction. This is most of you. You're welcome to change this to negative direction. And then slows down gradually to a stop. Slows down gradually. Right? So the mousetrap car sped up and then it slowed down. And obviously it was still moving in the positive direction when it slowed down. Right? So now I think we'll uh, do a motion map for the car as it slowed down, right? So that's always a good one. So it's sped, actually it's sped up and slowed down. So our car started with a large velocity. No, that's not true, sorry. It started with a small velocity. So I'm gonna draw a dot, then another dot, then I'm gonna have the dots spread out more to show that it sped up. Okay, now I'm going to draw an arrow from the first dot to the next dot. And now I like drawing my velocity vectors halfway to the next dot. So it should look something like this. Right? And then after that moment in time, it's slowed down. So this is the part where the mousetrap car speeds up. And then those are my velocity vectors. And that's actually, I'm going to draw dots at the same spot and show my acceleration vectors in the opposite direction because I'm speeding up. No, that's totally wrong. My acceleration vectors need to be in the same direction as my velocity vectors as I was speeding up, right? So my acceleration vectors should look something like this, right? Okay, now after that moment in time, the car slowed down, right? So now I'll draw like a dotted line to show that something changed here, okay? And then this is where the car slows down. And this is the positive direction and over here is the negative direction, right? So maybe the next moment in time that could be like there and then I'll draw them like closer together something like that and now I want to show my arrows getting smaller each moment in time, right? Something like that and then what happens is my acceleration vectors actually have to switch direction, right? So my acceleration becomes negative. And the, so those red arrows are my acceleration vectors, the black arrows are my velocity vectors. Now, this one's a little weird because my uh, acceleration vector actually switches at that moment in time. So it goes from being positive to being negative at that moment. So I don't know if going, showing it going positive, maybe right after that moment, let's say it switches, just to be consistent with my diagram. Okay? So that would be a motion map that I would expect you to do. Um, and then now we'll do a um, stack of beautiful graphs. Okay? So draw a nice stack of graphs. I want 
position on top, then I want velocity, then I want acceleration, right? So this is position, velocity, acceleration. And I just like having arrows on my axes. I don't really like having arrows on my graphs. Okay, so maybe I'll draw a dotted vertical line again to show the period of speeding up and then the period of slowing down. Okay, so my motion changes from speeding up to slowing down. So what I have is this beautiful curve where my car is speeding up, that's the concave up, and then this curve becomes concave down, right? Something like this, that's what I was expecting. And then if I'm speeding up while moving in the positive direction, my graph would look like this, and then I'm slowing down in the second half of the motion, right? And then my acceleration graph goes from being positive to uh, being negative, right? And you'll notice um, when my velocity and my acceleration vectors, when we talked about this today, when my when the velocity and acceleration are in the same direction car speeds up. This would also be true if I was moving in the negative direction. I just have to have negative velocity vectors and negative acceleration vectors. They'd be in the same direction then too. And then if you look over here, right, In the second part of the motion, when my velocity and acceleration are in, whoops, I don't know what that did. That wasn't right. Are in opposite directions. The car slows down. Right? And then another interesting part that I like to point out um, when x versus t graph is concave up, um, acceleration. is positive and on the other hand when x versus t graph is concave down acceleration is negative. So those are all interesting parts, um, parts of the story. So I think the last part we want to do is just focus on our velocity graph. Okay, so I'm just gonna make a large picture of my velocity graph for your convenience. Okay, so this is a velocity graph versus time. The velocity graphs have an extremely large amount of information on them, right? It looks like this. This is an idealized shape, something like that. And the motion changed right here. So I'll draw a dot vertical line because that's where my acceleration changed. Went from positive to negative. Changed direction. You may have also changed magnitude. Um, okay. So for this one, 
we have, I'm just going to make up numbers because I don't have data in front of me. We have velocity equals, we have some slope. I think in one of my classes today it was about 25 centimeters per second for every one second. That looks like a five, so I'm going to write it out right there. Times time. I'm sticking to the format that I've used. And then I'm going to say plus, um, I don't know, let's say it was like 0.1 meter for every one second. Okay? Now, this number would be our velocity at zero seconds. This number here would mean every second car speeds up 25 centimeters per second, right? And um, in the second period, I remember we had a negative, negative slope, and I think it was about 27. Maybe I'll use another color, use this color. So I'll say every second, whoops, I should write the equation first. So I'm just making this up. I don't know what the actual slopes you got were, but there'd be a negative there, right? Say 28. And one doesn't have to be necessarily bigger than the other. They might have come out totally a little bit different. That's okay. They're probably pretty close to each other. Um, I'm just writing a possible equation. I don't know what the intercept would be. This intercept would be like if we connected this line way up there. So I don't I don't know what that intercept would be. I'm just guessing it would be some positive number. Um, I'm going to just say 20 centimeters per second. Um, for us, I don't think this number is going to have much significance in this case. Um, however, this slope is really nice. Um, every second, in this case, uh, the car slows down uh, 28 centimeters per second. And uh, this is what we talked about today. That's what I would expect you to do, um, sort of with your mousetrap car results. And um, I'll make another screencast um, taking these things and making them a lot more general. Okay? So, next screencast um, is also really important. I could, you know what, I'm just going to add it on here because I'm at about 13 minutes. I could add it in pretty quick. Um, all right. So now uh, let's just talk about general equations, okay? Not specific to your mousetrap car, okay? If we assume constant acceleration, okay, think about what that means. That simply means um, your acceleration graph has to be a straight line. So it could be any constant acceleration. All right? There we go. So position, velocity, acceleration, time, time, time. So maybe I'll just make it complicated. I'll make it a negative acceleration, right? And let's just say this object's slowing down. Okay? So positive velocity is negative acceleration. The object would be slowing down while moving in the positive direction. So draw this one like this. Slopes get less steep, right? Okay, so if we assume constant acceleration, we can actually use the areas of our graphs, okay? Now, do you recall what the area of our velocity graph was? In the last unit, we called it displacement, um, which was a change in position. Nothing has changed here. The units still work out exactly the same. 
we just have to remember that this is a triangle instead of a rectangle like it was with the toy car and we could take one half of the initial velocity which is the height of that triangle times the time and that should get us our displacement vector okay which in this case is going to be a positive displacement because the change in position um, final position minus beginning position this is going to be a positive change right um, we can also do something interesting here we can find this area question is what in the world is this area right what does this mean well use the units and, and you'll be able to figure it out the acceleration is measured in meters per second squared and we'd be multiplying by time which is measured in seconds so when you multiply these units you're left with meters per second well over here we took an area and we found that that was a change in something that was a change in position now this area here is also a change in something right but it's not a change in position change in position wouldn't be measured in meters per second so in this case this would be a change in what right well if we look at the units it's got to be a change in velocity so whereas the area of a velocity graph is change in position the area of velocity versus time this is the area of an acceleration versus time which is not change in position this is change in velocity because those units are measured in meters per second and change in velocity is just going to be um, your acceleration times your time in this case, right? And this is going to be... Um, now, I don't know why these look like X's here, the, they're V's. These should be X's. Over here should be V's. V2 minus V1, right? And this is the area of an acceleration versus time graph. Okay? So I hope that helps you begin to understand how to use the areas and the slopes. Um, the slope of a position time graph is our velocity. The slope of a velocity graph is our acceleration. Now what's kind of interesting is if we, if we take the area of our acceleration graph we get our change in velocity. And if we take the area of our velocity graph we get a change in position. All right, You can actually use the graph slopes and areas to solve for just about anything in physics. Um, anything regarding kinematics anyway. Um, so I hope that helps. Hope you hope it gives you some nice fundamental ways you can fundamental tools you can use to solve problems. And uh, thanks for watching. Have a good day.